All right, good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief tour of ventilator-associated pneumonia and trauma patients. All right, so I'm going to talk about prevention and really try to answer the question of whether or not pneumonia in trauma patients is truly preventable. Talk to you about the best practice, at least in my opinion, for making the diagnosis of pneumonia, which is controversial. And then lastly, uh, another controversy is how long to treat once you've made the diagnosis, and I'll give you my two cents on that as well. So first of all, when we're talking about ventilator-associated pneumonia, what are we talking about? So it's an acquired infection not present or incubating at the time, at the initiation of mechanical ventilation. So what does that really mean? Well, most of us define it as a pneumonia that occurs greater than 48 hours after the patient's been intubated. And what causes it? So ventilator-associated pneumonia, it's a little bit of a misnomer because it's really caused by the endotracheal tube. So there's an aspiration event that occurs during intubation. You get pooling of secretions above the, the tube cuff, which, uh, you know, it's not 100% foolproof. Secretions make their way beyond the cuff into the lungs. A biofilm forms within the tube, and the, uh, the tube impairs secretion clearance. And why is this a problem? So we know that VAP prolongs duration of mechanical ventilation by up to 11 days, increases length of stay by 6 to 25 days, increases costs, and most importantly, it's independently associated with mortality in trauma patients, specifically with an injury, injury severity score of less than 25. So prevention. Um, there's been a lot of talk in the last 10 years about completely eradicating this. And part of that is, has to do with the so-called ventilator bundle. Um, and certain large institutions have tried to demonstrate or argue that um, by adhering to this bundle, we can actually have zero rates of VAP. And some hospitals have managed to show that in their, in their documentation. So, so this led to it being almost considered a never event. Now, it has not become officially a never event, but you know, CMS is considering, has considered adding it to the list, and the Joint Commission has considered um, including VAP rates um, for both the rating of hospitals and the accreditation of hospitals. So let's look at this bundle. So the bundle really comes from the IHI, and the bundle really is these five things, head of bed elevation, daily uh, sedation awakening, oral care, and then interestingly, stress ulcer prophylaxis and DVT prophylaxis, which don't, you know, obviously have anything to do with pneumonia. So does, the, does this really work? Well, um, you know, this was studied in a multi-institutional trial in trauma patients, and you can see that um, bundle compliance was not associated with any reduction of pneumonia. In fact, actually, it was associated with a non-statistical increase in pneumonia. Pulmonary contusion, as you'd expect, was also associated with pneumonia. And male gender was statistically significantly associated with pneumonia. So it doesn't seem to work in trauma patients. And in fact, it's really gotten mixed reviews as of late in, in all ICU comers. And the National Quality Forum, which is one of these large bodies, actually unendorsed the bundle in 2013. Um, another area of interest is subclotic secretion. So you've probably Many of you have seen these new ET tubes, relatively new, that um, work with a suction port that will drain the accumulation of uh, secretions above the ET cuff. This study was uh, fairly recent. This was from uh, University of California group in Fresno. And this was a case control study where they demonstrated that um, those patients who had this type of tube had uh, almost half the uh, incidence of, of VAP. So this may work but uh, it certainly doesn't eradicate it. So um, is VAP preventable? It's, I don't think so, but it's certainly there are maybe ways we can, can reduce the incidence. What about diagnosis? So it's definitely a diagnostic challenge. There's, you know, there's a lot of controversy over how to best diagnose this because there's very definitions of what pneumonia really is. And one of the large problems is most of the research on this has been in medical patients, and it doesn't really apply necessarily to surgical or specifically trauma patients. And you can see that um, 47 trauma centers reported their uh, rates of pneumonia for these two years, and you know they're all over the place. And largely, that's 
attributable to differences in, in uh, diagno diagnosis. So um, one of the big questions is, is, you know, what culture do you use to make this diagnosis? And, um, you know, there's, the medical literature says that it's okay to use sputum cultures. The trauma literature says otherwise. This paper is from 1993 from Memphis. And you'll see a lot of the, the work I'm going to present from Memphis. Um, so they defined clinical pneumonia as such, and they did triplicate cultures on 107 patients. So just routine sputums, bronchoscopy with a PSB, and then bronchoscopy with bronchial alveolar lavage, or BAL. And then they did their therapy based on sputum. And they used a 10 to the 5 cutoff for BAL, 10 to the 3 for PSB. And you can see that, um, that using routine sputum severely overcalled the pneumonias. Um, you know, BAL really uh, cut down the rate of diagnosis of pneumonia to 30% of what sputums were showing it. So um, that started a practice of doing quantitative BALs to diagnose pneumonia. And then the question was, well, 10 to the 4 versus 10 to the 5, or what, what's the, the appropriate quantitative cutoff that you get back from your lab? So um, this study from 2004, basically clinical suspicion of pneumonia drove to a, a bronchoscopy with BAL. And then the question was whether or not it's really pneumonia versus not pneumonia or really a SERS response is how they def defined it. So they used 10 to the 5 or 100,000 colony forming units as their cutoff for, for the quantitative culture result. And um, this is really summarizes the findings that um, the bottom line is that the positive predictive value and negative predictive value of using the 10 to the 5 or 100,000 cutoff versus 10 to the 4 or 10,000 cutoff for your culture um, was more favorable. So I'll just briefly run he through here. There was no mortality difference between using either cutoff and certainly more expensive because you, you end up treating a lot more pneumonias when you use a lower threshold. They also found um, in an earlier paper that your pathogens change over time. So within the first week, you tend to have um, gram positives and H flu, and then you get the more hospital acquired gram negatives later in the hospital stay. So this led to, the, to this uh, diagnostic algorithm, which we used when I was in Memphis, and now I'm using at St. Joe's, that basically you have clinical evidence of pneumonia, and um, if it's the first week, you just treat uh, with unison. And if it's, they've been there greater than seven days, use cefamine and vancomycin. But you make your antibiotic decision whether to stop or continue based on this uh, 10 to the 5 cutoff. The clinical pulmonary infection score has become um, kind of popular. And this has been validated to work in medical patients. Basically, the score is a point system for various clinical findings. And it's suggested that this can predict the presence of pneumonia. And some suggest that we use this to drive whether or not to do a, a, a bronchoscopy with BAL or not. Um, I advise not to use this in trauma patients. Um, we found in Memphis that uh, when you calculated CPIS scores and then looked at actually the BAL results, you'll see that there's a large number of patients with scores up to six who you would not trigger a BAL who actually had pneumonia by BAL. So um, not terribly useful in trauma patients. So I think the best practice is to use quantitative bronchoscopy with BAL, use a cutoff of 10 to the 5, and don't use the CPIS to make your decision as to whether or not to do BAL. So moving lastly to how long you're going to treat. So duration of therapy, um, there's a lot of emphasis in the medical literature that you know treat for a week, and then if the patient has a clinical response and you can use the CPIS score, to see if there seems to be getting better, you can stop the antibiotics. Well, the problem is, is that this doesn't really work in trauma patients because they have a lot going on and may seem like they still have symptoms of pneumonia when it's really not. And you can see here, um, this is Memphis data as well, that no matter the days of therapy, over 14 days, these patients look remarkably the same. So it's hard to say that any of them are really getting better. So that led to a practice of using um, repeat BALs to see if you're actually clearing the, uh, the microbe um, quantitatively. And uh, what we found was that um, 
for these late bugs, MRSA, Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, Steno, Enterobacter, um, you know, by, for a 10-day course, a large amount of them were, were cleared by then, except for MRSA and particularly Pseudomonas. And then by 14 days, um, you had good clearance. So this led to this duration of therapy uh, algorithm for, uh, for the late bugs, the hospital-acquired bugs. So Pseudomonas gets 14 days no matter what. It's just not worth doing a repeat BAL. But for the other bugs, it's worth doing it on day seven. And that can tail your, your therapy to, uh, to 10 days or going out to 14 days. And uh, comparing that defining study to another study that was sort of a validating study, they found that there was a significant uh, reduction in antibiotic days per VAP episode. And in addition, um, there was no difference in recurrence. 2% uh, recurrence in the defining study and then 1.5% in the validating study. So the bottom line then, I think we're just at the 10 minute mark here. Um, not clear at all that this is an eradicable or really preventable disease. Um, best practice really for diagnosis, I think, is to use quantitative cultures. Use 100,000 as your cutoff for those quantitative cultures. And don't use the CPIS for trauma patients. And then a treatment duration um, for at least the hospital acquired bugs. Uh, do your repeat BAL on day seven, providing that they're still on the ventilator. And then that can um, determine whether you're going to continue for a 14-day course of therapy or stop therapy at 10 days. Thank you very much.